Ready, Eric? Got it. Sure. You said you was damn ready. You already got the cameras going and shit. I thought I was. You're listening to Four Posterity the Podcast. Strap it and buckle up, blah, blah. <laughs> blah, blah. <laughs> You're listening to Four Posterity the Podcast. Blah, blah, blah. With Aaron Michael Fox and Eric Kuzan. And with us in the studio today, we've got an extra special guest. Welcome. This is Shank. What's going on, people? Chris Shanklin in the house. So how are we going to start this off, fellas? Episode 23 of Four Posterity. Is it Chris or Christopher? Like, do you have a preference? Um, it doesn't matter, man. Actually, on stage, under a black sheet, they're going to call me Christopher Moore because that's what my Facebook page is under. Yeah. So I just stuck with it, man. I'm just call him Nigga Shank. It would be good. <laughs> oh, shit. Damn. I, I am that, that Nigga Shank. Don't just say that Nigga Shank. That Nigga Shank. <laughs> <laughs> with the views that you don't agree with. <laughs> the angry black man in the, house. the angry black man. Angry yes. black man, Christopher Shanklin. He's not really angry. He's more upset because he's he has a lazy eye and a lisp. <laughs> like he's not really angry. It's more of a you know fuck you God type thing. Just welcome. It ain't really fuck you God, man. but fuck all of y'all for picking on me for all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. Yeah, I almost start fucking with y'all now too. You feel no, me? No, I had to say, and all honestly, Shank is the most comfortable person with who he is. Because I have to say, if I had a lazy eye, and a stutter, <laughs> and a speech impediment, and a walk and crooked, a lazy you know, eye. You got that walk crooked, everybody thought it was gay for the longest and, time. Yeah, and, I, and, I swayed, and I swayed my arms like a faggot, and I really like musicals, I wouldn't be that comfortable in my skin as he is. He is the most comfortable person I respect him for just being him. Dude. And rocking the Mujahideen beard. Yeah, oh, dude. Right. He wants the whole... Who else am I going to be? Like, he's got a Con Air pick that he picks his beard with. <laughs> this shit is amazing to me. <laughs> Who picks their beard? Angela Davis didn't pick her afro. Oh, <laughs> shit. Stop. Let me make sure this camera's still going. Yeah, everything going good today. Okay, this shit ain't stopping me. Let me make it sure. Oh, no. There was, there was Shank running off to check the camera. Yeah, uh, we actually did, did a podcast. Um, I have my own podcast on Reverb Nation, shooting the shit with Shank. We can't we afford Reverb Nation. Yeah. We, don't, we don't plug other people's we just, podcasts. We're poor. Well, I feel, I feel <laughs> the hell out there. We just did episode 13 of my house on Sunday, and the camera cut out, so we still got audio that y'all can check out, but no YouTube feed. So that's why I was checking the camera, because I'm trying to hit all, you know, all areas. You know we saying? generally focus on just the audio. With yeah. more posterity. I dig you. But it was a good episode. A great episode, man. Yeah, yeah. shooting Last week, yeah. Yeah, Shanks episode. Great. Yeah, episode 13, check it out on Reverb Nation. Shout out to Juan in the building. <laughs> he held it down. Mr. In the building. <laughs> you know, they ain't doing that Juan in the building. <laughs> Mr. In the building had, held it down <laughs> with his Lupe Fiasco looking ass. <laughs> Yo, I, I will say this, that's my nigga, but man, grown as hell got a mohawk and shit. That shit crazy, man. <laughs> grown as fuck, man. That shit that's crazy. That's fine. He's, he's okay with that. As long as Weekend got the, whatever the fuck he got going on on his head, Juan is cool. Yeah, but... Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> Weekend's a different kind of individual, though. You know what I'm saying? He's a different kind of dude. I like him. I like Weekend. That's Honestly. one of those phrases, it is what it is, that totally straddles racial lines. Like, like, that's country, basically. It is. Juan is, yeah, he's... But back to weekend, he's like a drugged up Michael Jackson to me. That's why I fuck with him. And so Michael Jackson. I agree. Yeah, so it's <laughs> like, yeah but I'm saying on it, like, when I'm fucked, and that's the real. Just, just picture pitch, pitch Mike talking about being fucked up the whole time. You yeah. got the weekend. Yeah. I'm about to go to sleep and never wake up again. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's the truth, though. That's, that's Mike fucked up. What's that word? Go ahead and fuck my life up. Man, that was the greatest one. Uh, everybody's going to laugh at this because I'm throwing out another When I was opening for Bruce Bruce. <laughs> but when I was opening for Bruce Bruce, that was, Mike had just died. 
and that was a, a major hot button issue. Like I learned, dude, that was a big deal when I happened. learned real quick as the only way to my birth black show not to even for real, really, dude. His birth, my birthday is oh, June twenty fifth. Dude, sucks, he died on my birthday. It's two, let's see, two thousand and nine to be exact. Yeah, I dude, I'm sitting there celebrating at my damn house, and Michael Jackson dies. Yeah, that killed like, your whole party. Dude, you died. Dude, dude, really? What do you do after that? Like, you can't just be like, all right, more. Fucking Dude, it's this is my birthday. We just, <laughs> we just got drunk and played. More Cavarsier for the niggas. Like, you can't Yo, do that. More what? <laughs> He's like Cavarsier. He said Curvasier. That's how I speak. C O U R. More Curvasier. But no, I just sat there and got drunk and played Michael Jackson the rest of the day, like, on my birthday no more. You know what I'm saying? We all mourning Michael Jackson being dead. We have a Michael Maybe Jackson tribute that you, you can look up whenever. <laughs> We did a Michael Jackson tribute. I fucked with Mike go years ago. Make change. I'm going to make a change <laughs> for once in my life. Since you came from the street, I love to wait. I'm not too blind, but then I'm not to see them weep. <laughs> <laughs> a broken bottle towel in a one Y'all way do it. They follow each other on the wind, you know. Cause they got nowhere to go. That's why I want you to know. <laughs> Y'all dropping his shit. Fuck. Woo! 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 Not Michael Jackson Rick Flair. I can't tell with you. You're rich. You can get my Mr. Bubbles. I do like Rick Flair a lot. <laughs> Woo! Man, that was the hottest thing when I was in high school to just walk up to somebody and just in the chest. Woo! Smack him in the chest. <laughs> Woo! Man, it used to be that for us. And um, another thing. Just, just tell you how rowdy people were in Bluefield. We used to sit there and just run through people and, 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 and say, Grexy. You know what I'm saying? You know how Grexy would do is bash you against like the wall real quick. No, you was on some completely different white shit than we was on. Yeah, that was pretty Well, we have bashed you against the wall for me. Grexy. Oh, Gretzky. Yeah. <laughs> I know. My bad. That, no, I get completely what you're saying. Don't record that. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck you. Dude, <laughs> you're wearing your Bryant jersey talking about hockey. Last game yes. tonight. The last game tonight, man. Dude, Bryant's yeah. last game is tonight. Yeah. Whether you're a sports fan or not, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah. What time's the game? Shit, might, I say 10 30. Might have to watch that. 10 30, I want to say. They're going against um, the Utah Jazz. I'm, I couldn't don't be watch it. It's not going to be worse than anything. He's not going to do anything. No, I'm going to watch it because this is my favorite player since Magic Johnson. I'm a Laker fan, so. I'm gonna watch it anyway, but um, would you be like a dumb competition if you don't watch it? He's not gonna do anything. He's just gonna be lazy the whole game and not do shit. See, that's the whole thing. If he's he, gonna sit back and reminisce on raping bitches, and he's not even. Gonna, <laughs> he's not gonna rape nobody today, though. He's not gonna rape nobody. But he's gonna think about how fun it was when he did. Man, he ain't raped that bitch. He did not rape that bitch. I don't think he did either, honestly. And they felt like three different sperms in that bitch that day. Yes, she's like, she for like three she's people. She's a hoe. Ho! <laughs> I say that you's a hoe. Ho! You's a hoe. Ho! <laughs> Yo, whatever happened to Ludacris, man? Like, granted, his last album was pretty decent and nobody... Yeah, but He fell off a table, He man. fell off a long time ago, man. He fell off. When his last album was like last year. Well, he had to paint it up, dope. midget. Yeah. Around his necklace, like it was a real thing, like they had a, an actual midget. <laughs> yes. That was the end of Ludacris. Feels like I got a midget but hanging I, around my necklace. I like that. It was a real nigga, like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I like that motherfucker. Like he, he can rap his ass. He huh? is good, but he kind of fell off though. No, he did. What was the last big he had, big hit he had? Because Rosa Parks had to be close. To no, him. that was that's Outkast. You're right. Damn so, you, the fuck. Are you right up there with fucking Andrew oh, Best? All niggas look alike to white folks. You got to with Andrew Best and... Yo! Was it Chuck D and Andrew OPP? Black. No. We said OPP. He, he said, Chuck wasn't D. Chuck D and Naughty by Nature? <laughs> and I was like, no. But could you imagine if Chuck D was in Naughty by Nature? OPP, how can I explain it? I'll take it from my favorite. I have it all too much understanding. Oh, it's 
for the other piss when people scratch the temple. Sorry, Bernie <laughs> Mac. <laughs> yeah, what is Bernie Mac at the end? <laughs> <coughs> Gonna be some furniture moving around in here. <laughs> I'm, oh, God, Bernie Mac is such a fucking, like, he had a set on Def Comedy Jam that I hated. Okay. And he would just, but I ain't scared of you, mother. Yeah. He that's, would just, that's a fake, to no, me, the best short set ever. No, I hate the it. The best short set ever. Because he would say something that wasn't even that funny. He would, I ain't scared of you, motherfuckers. And then everybody but would laugh. Know, do you know the story behind it, though? It doesn't matter. It was Okay, well, I'm going to tell you the story behind it since you, I thought it was a great set, but I'm going to tell you the story no. behind it. What happened was, the way that show went, of course, it's like, let's say one, one, one of our shows that Black Sheep, when it's like 15 some people, just they're only recording like three or four to actually go to the show. You know what I'm saying? So the guy right before him bombed terribly. People booing him. I mean, it's, it's, it's really that fucking bad. That happened a lot. Yeah. 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 But it's really fucking bad. So Bernie Mac at the time. Not I ain't scared him, of you, motherfucker. Not being that known. So, you know what I'm saying? He went out there, and then that's why he kept saying, I ain't scared of you because. The, the guy right before me just got booed something terrible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't scared of him. So, no matter what he, he was saying, shit that didn't have nothing to do with people being scared. But it was funny the way he, but he just did it the whole time. He was, That's what made I ain't so scared of you, motherfuckers. And then he played music and he'd do a little dance. Yeah, kick it! Kick it! Kick it! Yeah, I remember that. Doom, doom, doom. But it worked. It worked. No, it wasn't. That was just get her done. I hate it, though. but he's much better than that. But that, that's a set that made Bernie him. Mac was fucking amazing. But that's a set that made him. That's that sad it. that that made him. Because Why after that, because after that, I was like, I'm done with this nigga. Like, I, that's the it's original a gimmick. King set. The original King oh set my was the God, first. dude, we yeah. talk about blowjobs. That was his best set. That's his best set. That's his best set. I agree. But I, that's the one that got him that popularity for him to be able to do the Kings of Comedy shit. You feel me? Yeah, the Kings of Comedy was kind of his pinnacle too. I get that, but he was amazing. But he didn't have to resort to that. I ain't scared of him every fucking ten minutes. That was early Bernie Mac. No, I, no I was, but he was funny. It was just, it was just, that. It was just a yo. That's as that's like Robin Harris doing the fucking that's, that's baby like as as big, Okay, well, as far as the baby's kids with Robin Harris, I ain't gonna dude, lie. Robin Harris was fucking hilarious, dude. I think he's funny as shit too. But the whole thing I got with him is that I watched the documentary on him, and I lost a little respect. And I'm gonna tell you why because he couldn't really leave Compton. Like pretty much just one of them things. All like, right, yeah. He I'm went everywhere that. else and. He was still making people laugh, but he wasn't comfortable with it. So when HBO hollered at him, they had to sit there and make Compton Hollywood yeah. for a day. He was so he very get... confident, but he was fucking funny though. Dude. He was, Robert but Harris, you were wearing Robert Harris right now. You know Robert Harris is. I know, his kids. Yeah, I know the name, but I'm drawing a blank on it. Dude, he's great, but the he thing is, it's like okay, picture like this. Picture, but he's all personality. Picture if if I like, let's say I kill a hundred. You feel me? But now I go to Bluefield, I don't kill. I go to Beckley, I don't go wherever the fuck else. The big cities. Yeah, well, he's like Vinny the Don, <laughs> only Robin Harris. <laughs> it's oh, fun oh, that I'm thing. not trying to, Vinny, I'm not trying to show you. I know it's the second time I said something bad I, about you. In two, in two, in two, back and Vinny started back to back. Like, Vinny, I think. Your personality is hilarious. I think your charisma is hilarious. You just have to be, you have to have something that everybody can relate to. And I think Robin Harris actually had something everybody could relate to, but he didn't know how to relay it to everybody without the whole. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, got, I get where you come from. The I, Bernie I, Mac Vinny is the, he, his energy. He's a very funny guy and he has energy. Yes, his energy, his fucking stage presence, everything about him is funny. But if he only talks about stuff that three people know about? But I sit there and say this, though. Also, I do sit there and I want to somewhat blame it on Bluefield. I feel like if he leaves more and goes to a different, you know what I'm saying? He'll Are you doing another about. Bluefield show? I don't know when it's going to go down, but eventually it's going to go down. Can I be on it? Of course you can. No, you were supposed to be on this one. Yeah, I was but a you boy. weren't here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually wanted Ian Nolte to be the headliner. If, if, oh, my God. So I really didn't know that. Fucking Ian Nolte and Bluefield would have been epic. <laughs> I want that's, that's, that's my original idea. First One thing, time we did a dive show at Stats Bar in Barbersville, mm -hmm. and they had a jukebox. Where they had the bombing. And they had a jukebox. Yeah, and they had a jukebox. And Ian Nolte put a quarter in and played Wu Tang Clan. Ain't nothing to fuck with. <laughs> in front of all the. <laughs> Like we're all sitting in the bar 
And all the hunting we hear, all of a sudden we hear, Tiger style. <laughs> <laughs> Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. And he just loses it. Yeah. Dude, that was the best shit ever. Feel like they shouldn't have put it in the gym box if they didn't want me to play it. Pretty much, um, like the way the Bluefield show even went down, uh, really, I it was on Valentine's Day, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I got a random hit on my inbox. Your dude was like, yo, would you want to do the show on Bluefield? And I'm like, of course, just let me yeah. know, like, of course I want to do this. You know what I'm saying? Adam so, was ecstatic. You know what I'm saying? So that's when, of course, I was going to hit up Andrew. Everybody knows I'm going to hit Andrew up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's your that's your. You partner. know what I'm saying? That's my partner. Plus, that's also my ride. <laughs> Andrew, you know what I'm you know do? We, we wanted that, but yeah, that's also my ride. So I had to go and hit him up. You know what I'm saying? Then I hit up Ian Oki first thing at, right after that. Hell, I hit Ian Oki up first thing after that. And Ian said he had like a film festival to go to. So yeah. that's why I just put the shit in the open mic comedy for everybody to jump on. You know what I'm saying? And you know what I'm saying? Um, of course, it's Culver is on there. You know what I'm saying? Culver jumps on. Because he's from there. And I hit Vinny. Now, I'll be honest with you. Um, I expected to have on that show. The reason I didn't have on that, a lot of people been asking me, I'm going to start put that, put that out in the room. You know what I'm saying? Put that out. Why didn't you? Okay, I'm going to tell you the reason why I didn't have on. Yeah, please tell me. <laughs> Can I get one of those real cigarettes? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. What, you're not liking you're your right A-cigarettes there? No, the A-cigarettes are not doing it for me. No, no, no. <laughs> but anyway, um, the reason that happened the way it did, um, I'm sitting there getting my shit together and everything, and then he sat there and texted me and told me that the way they looked at it in Bluefield, they thought that he should hairline and I should bring him out. Now, granted, I should have researched this more. I'm not saying that that's not what happened, that it's not real, just... I'm not even saying he didn't do a good job. He did, but I will say that from a comedian standpoint, from hearing everybody else's feedback, he wasn't ready for that role. But at that. the show, he but brought did, the house down. He rocked for that show, and that's why yes. I, I still feel confident. Don't feel about, bad about no, putting No, I feel confident. It's just, the thing that pissed me off about it, and it wasn't even him that pissed me off, it was everybody else coming to me afterwards. Like, you know, I think everybody else who watched the show afterwards weren't giving him that same love. But you have a lot of comedian friends yeah. who understand how comedy works. Really? He does have a lot of comedy friends. But they understand how comedy they, works? For the most part. <clears throat> for the most part. You can't be completely regional and have jokes that only pertain to that set. Oh, I see. Correct. Correct. And that's, I'll be also be honest, um, other people who have talked to me after that show who have been trying to actually book shows and shit with people. And that's another thing that's good about me posting a video of you. Adam Culver was the, v, the, the MVP of that show. You know Nobody what? saw that coming. I'm sitting there and tell you this. I haven't um, seen the show, so I gotta take your word. As far as the Adam Corver thing goes, um, I'll be honest with you. I've heard positive and negative about everybody that was there, period. You hear me? Everybody. Yeah. Now, I'm sitting and you tell should. You, no, I'm sitting there and tell you is that I've had at least five people come to me and tell me that Corver had the best set. And I, Corver had the best set. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not I, just saying that because I did. live with him. No, <laughs> and I may be homeless if I don't. The fact is, Corver had, and he'd never done 15 minutes before. He was nervous, okay. but he carried that whole set. I was going to say this. Um, I got a lot of love about mom, but I was sitting there and saying that I think that Andrew Best had a really, really good set. And the reason why I sat there and say this is because, considering that the mic went out on twice. The best did ever And he kept going, like, you know what I'm saying? Plus, and he didn't compromise his style. The thing about me is that I still compromise my style for that show. Let's be honest with you. I'm not a real tough dude. He he's been around me. I hang with a lot of gangster motherfuckers, but that's not me. <laughs> no, Especially not on stage. On stage, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I never understood the whole fucking I'm angry black man with the lazy eye and the lisp and the stutter. Like it never made sense to me. But you get it now though. When you're you're terrible. Terrible. But you get it now though. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You get it now. But I you get it. Terrible. Yeah, I get it. But at the I, 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 it's not. I'm not completely sold on it. Like, you don't pull it off, I think, as well as you think maybe in your head that you pull it off. And, that's and I don't I mean that as a... Don't laugh. No, You're making no. it sound like I'm a no, dick right now. I'm and you. and I'm you. trying to be <laughs> supportive because Shank has a great thing going. Like, he has a gimmick, and it works for the most part. To paraphrase you, Shanklin, you've got a great thing going. You're just not doing it well. 
Yes. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that, is, that is what I'm saying. Okay. In a less asshole form. Well, what I was trying to say is that um, as far as the whole angry black man gimmick goes, it came from um, my second set of black sheep. You know what I'm saying? The ABS said. And for whatever reason, that stuck. Like, yeah. all the people who have, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, a lot of the connects I've got has actually been through that set, believe it or not, because you're on you network a lot with the internet and shit. So, that shit just stuck. So, it got to a point where, honestly, before I was calling myself the angry black man, people were calling me that just based off of that set and just never. Is that something know. you want, though? Is that something you want to embrace? Harold doesn't think. Like, just because they call you it, a nigga don't mean you should be a nigga. Fuck you, but I feel where you're from. F, but that's a great analogy, though. It's a great Fuck analogy. You, but I, <laughs> no, no, just call, that's the, like a boo in the water. <laughs> no, of the audience. Okay, boo. Great <laughs> All right, pretty much what it was is that um, it just got to a point where it just stuck, bro. And is that what I am? I happy with it? I guess I was happy because it became somewhat proper to, to a certain extent. You feel me? Like that's only because it's easy for you. Now, granted, right now, if, if you notice, I've been trying to move out of this. Yeah. If you notice my last two sets, like one was a bomb. It wasn't just because I was unprepared. That was one <laughs> reason, but two was because. Yeah, I, that was Eric's fault. That was a great set. No, that one wasn't a bomb. I'm talking about the no, before. it wasn't. The one before was a complete bomb. Was a bomb. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, I was, like, it was two reasons. One is that I was unprepared, and two. I haven't been angry since like February something. Like I've been pretending to be angry for about a month. Yeah, but it's not, that's don't when you start getting something. Exactly. Right. Like don't pretend to be something you're exactly. not. Exactly. So right now I'm just shaking. This next thing I do, I'm just gonna be shaking. We're gonna see where it goes with that. You know what I'm saying? You got some prepared for 420? Not per se. Not like 420 specific. Exactly. No, like specific. you're doing the show, of course. The show. <laughs> specific. You know what I'm saying? You got anything Atlantic going Western on? Western time. I had something that I, like I had something that I was working on. I had used a little bit of it on that last show, but that was really just an idea that I used. So I, I still have an idea of going, like, it's, it's not going to be too angry. You feel me? Like, I was angry as fuck on the podcast Sunday, but that was, and you said that was probably going to be me mad for real. Yeah, but that was funny, though. Yeah, but I was pissed the fuck off for real. I'm but. still laughing at that, still. <laughs> for no I was reason. Of that. Granted, this is just um for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Yo, you, as I say, I got my phone back. Cause you know what I'm saying. I'm not going. Did you get? Did you get this? That's your phone back, or you got a new? This one? is my actual phone back. First, first thing after the situation, he got out. He gave him a phone. But look at that car. I was in that. <laughs> that's from the building. <laughs> yeah. I <can> eat <laughs> oh man. So you don't. But yeah, that's. We gotta post that picture so you, the viewing audience knows what we're talking about. I mean, <laughs> I'm not. It's kidding. a car missing the entire driver's side of it. Yeah, and I'm gonna pass the side thing, guy. Because <laughs> like, because there was a building on the driver's side. Probably <laughs> was a tree. Probably a tree. Granted, either way it goes, it's just. <laughs> they hit a large, non-moving object is the point. Yeah, but I was drinking, but the I wasn't motherfucking driving the really quote with court of Mr. Turner. Yes. You feel me? But, yeah, as far as that goes, um, like I said, back to that, he's a person that's what they wanted, and like I said, I still stand by the, that decision in Bluefield, because he did rock the house that day. He did. And I thought that he had a great set down there. It was just the other people who look at it as far as comedian-wise don't look at it the same way, yeah. but... If you're just a guy who's just watching the period, just to laugh, in that area, you're going to find the hell Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But he couldn't do that anywhere and kill. He couldn't take that set nowhere else. I do agree with that, and I told him that. I, but I, at the same time, I do feel like he's a funny guy. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's actually, I still haven't been out of state yet performing. You know what I'm saying? I've did a couple things in this state. He's actually been to High Point, North Carolina twice. You know what I'm saying? One time he killed, the second time wasn't that great. But regardless, it's, and you know what I'm saying? And granted, it's straight black room shit. I'll be honest, I, I started off wanting to be more of a black room comedian. And yeah, it just, it's a tough gig. It, it is. I mean, it's I, very limited. I ain't gonna front. I'm glad. It's it like playing all redneck. Clothes. Okay, well, I'm so glad it didn't go that way. Pigeonhole it. Okay, well, I'm glad it didn't go that way now, but you gotta understand the reason it didn't go that way is because of black sheep. Because where black sheep was there, and he was there my first time. I was funny, but I was still very niggerish. The second time, I was funny, but a little <laughs> less niggerish. You know what I'm saying? The third time, which was my first time doing the whole s server problem set, which is arguably still my best set, arguably still. 
you know what I'm saying, um, it was just universal. And I took you know, notice of that. Right. So I've been trying to be more universal with everything. Like, yes, still bring up all my flaws and bring down black, but have it where it's not just set to where only black people laugh at it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and honestly, I've also got slack over that too because there are some people now who's like, oh, you're not <laughs> you doing it for us. Yeah, you're could not doing it for us. <laughs> it's like, like, not being funny though, but everybody knows I'm, you already know I'm a very pro black individual, but yeah. these black people aren't coming to my shows. These I'm black not people, pro black at all. <laughs> well, I'm gonna buy in. But if these black people aren't coming to my shows, these black people aren't watching my podcast, and you know what I'm saying? Then. Hell, I, I, gotta, I, gotta way, I don't exclude black people or anybody from any kind of situation. Right, I'm not excluding them either. But I also, I don't put up with dumb stuff either. Like you have to, like there has to be some kind of. Well, I put up with more dumb stuff than you and the reason why, because I'm so involved in a little bit of this dumb stuff. What does that mean though? Well, you're the one who brought up dumb stuff first. What does it mean to you? If you ask me what the dumb stuff means, like for instance, um, I probably shouldn't even be talking about the situation. I'm going to be very vague on it, but it is what it is. There's a local rat beef going on right now. Local rat beef to me is fucking dumb. I've been said this a long time ago on my podcast. If you remember, I had a podcast with Doc. And I was yeah. in talking to him. was like, why is everybody fighting over a big piece of nothing? He's like, competition is always good. No. Y'all fighting over a big piece of, a big piece of nothing. And then they... <laughs> like, like, seriously, like, if y'all win, what the fuck need you need, need win? Uh... uh, uh what do you win in the fucking brick, a fucking center block? Like, what's here? What was there to win? Yeah, I get that. There's, there's nothing here to win. It's hurting the throne from K Cut after he went to prison. <laughs> <laughs> and then, here's the funny thing. There's a lot of people that tell you that he didn't even have the throne, he t- per se. He, he didn't. didn't. But he was the biggest thing from her at the time. I'll sadly. Yeah, unfortunately. Here goes the thing, though. All right. When you say it's sadly, I feel you coming from because you're a real hip hop head. But at the end of the day, Think about this. No, I saw his set at the Funny Bone where he brought 400 people to cheer for him and beat up Josh McDonald, who clearly had a oh, no, better no, no, set no, than he did. You said K.K. Cutter. K.K. Cutter yeah, rapper. Cutter. But he also went to the fucking Funny Bone. He, he, uh, he had a stand up one day? Yes. Not that I'm aware of. Yes, he did. He did. I know Cut did say that though. That shit funny to me. That's news to me. <laughs> you were there. I'm sure I was. I, mean, I, I know it. Cut did say that though. <laughs> Just because I was there doesn't remember. Doesn't mean I remember. I anything. know Cut did say that. That's true. I take that. Quite a lot of the funny bone is is a. Very Either way it goes. Back to the Cut situation. I'm like something to see it. Cut's freestyle game was on point. I tell people all the time, and people get mad at me for saying this because of the little bad stigma with everything else going yeah, on. Yeah, I get it. But I told you, um, Cut is honestly one of the best of her freestyle period from this area. Um, as far as Cut's drive, you got to think. The Kentucky Derby about to go on. If Cut was out, Cut would be at the Kentucky Derby. You know what I'm saying? He was at all the, the NCIA, whatever these little, whatever the name of the event, any little event going on, yeah. he was there. You feel me? And that's what I give him that a lot of these other local rappers aren't doing. He was at yeah. all the little spots. Now, as far as just his music goes, um, it's not what I would want to listen to myself, but <laughs> is he doing what was popular and shit? Hell, I don't listen to this popular shit, so fuck it. If he was still popular, hell, he was still getting booked and shows out of town, I can't knock him. We used to play him at the Funny Bone all the time because he didn't have to pay royalties. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what, dog, at the end of the day, that's still good exposure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he may have sold an album or two out of it. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know what all these. Well, I guess we do know what he sold, apparently. But regardless, it is what it is, bro. I'm just saying. Like, I'm just saying, huh? Man, I guess we can say it since everybody's gone to jail now. But when Kutta and his friends were smoking blunts at the bar in the Funny Bone, I was like, oh, this isn't good. This isn't. This club's gonna close immediately, and it closed not long after. Well, dude, when Mike Epps had the low, um, the, this thing down there, smoking a blunt on stage, you can see the, in the YouTube video. He's smoking a blunt on stage. Everybody smoking blunt in the crowd. Like, how the fuck do you run a business like this? Mike? You don't. That was so ridiculous. After any time Epps was here, he's here twice, and any time after the show. Like, early show, late show, it didn't matter. We'd go out and find at least 20, 20 25 tables that would have blunt innards where people were entered in being blunts under the table. Yeah. 
They just empty it onto the floor and pack it. I mean, and that's the reason why people don't like dealing with that Chitlin Circus shit. Damn, y'all. There was so, it. <laughs> there was so <laughs> much weed <laughs> both times Epps was here. Y'all want, y'all want to know what why the funny bones closed? Granted, it, it was bad management, but then again, no, it wasn't bad management. It's bad ownership. Ownership management's the same. It's the all funny the same bone, kind of, same shit, bro. The funny bone really tried to back out as soon as they got here. But it wasn't until that idiot Tom from Richmond came in that it really sank. Well, it sank you twice. You don't pay the talent, you don't pay the hotel bills, you don't pay the food well, bills. Well, it sank twice, though. Like, you know, I think it fucked I'm up. talking about the first time. And then the second time, when they reopened, they banned everybody from the original staff from coming back. And not a single person, including the general manager, had ever set foot in a comedy club before being hired down here. So go figure. You've got an entire staff who doesn't know what they're doing. And it closed in six months. Big surprise. They banned me from the club. I didn't know that. Yeah, it wasn't until... Is that why you don't have y'all right now? Probably. (laughs) (laughs) Real shit. Because my man was great. You know what I'm saying? And I remember I told you about you the other day, like, because I can look at this guy on YouTube and he's in Boston and New York and other places, you know what I'm saying? Like, hell, I ain't been too far, period. You feel me? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker be giving me love, and I'm like, what? what? I, I really ain't did shit yet. You feel me? Nothing. Yeah, I get that. You know what I'm saying? It was a, like, I tried to take over that club after it closed the first time. Mm-hmm. And like I say, I was kicked out. I wasn't allowed back. None of us were. And it wasn't until I got some investors where I was trying to buy the club that all of a sudden they rolled out the red carpet. Oh, yeah, it's still good. I, I'm listening to you, man. I'm making sure everything is still wrong. Shake had to ca- check the camera again. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I'm making sure. We're going to put on some great footage the other fucking day. I'm saying, like, this footage I'm not trying to lose. Here we got naked girls in here. We got belly dancing. Woo! It's, just, it's a feast for the eyes and the ears. Not really, man. <laughs> oh, I'm around two ugly motherfuckers right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's really what I'm about to see. Two ugly motherfuckers in <laughs> shank. Well, this is... That's, that's, <laughs> that's one thing Cutter yeah. used to talk about is... Well, he said it was uh, pretty. Don't say that. No. Oh, God, I'm about to say that now. No, it's, we're, we're, talking, <laughs> saying, we're talking about racial integration. <laughs> that just like this podcast right here, you don't realize how much black and white people hang out together in Huntington until you go to some other, go to Richmond, and you don't see the interaction like this. In, in Huntington, it's, it's kind of... This one sounds so fucking racist, but the black people I know that don't hang with white people at all don't have jobs. <laughs> if you have a job, period, then you have to be okay with being around white people. Because guess what? More than likely, a white person signed your check. More than likely, <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna work with a lot of white people? Hell, my girlfriend is white. You feel me? Like fuck the bullshit. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Hell, you know what I'm saying? When, when you when I went to school, there was a white principal, there was white teachers. You know what I'm saying? I was around white students. You feel me? If you're not around white people, then you don't have anything else going on but the hustle. You dig me? That's it. <laughs> Is that what you base it off of? Alright. You name me a black person that ain't around any white people at all. Uh, and you think what they doing. I can't. I'm not trying to say I'm not trying to be an asshole, but okay, straight up though. If there's a black person who's around nobody white, what the fuck they doing? You're not working. That's not true. They might be making straight to D V D. We on West Virginia right now. We on, okay, we on West Virginia right now. I tell you like this, if they're making straight to DVD shit, they probably need a white person for like editing or some shit, some audio check or some, you know what I'm saying, some type of shit. See, I, I'm fucking my image up even more right now. I'm just telling the truth, motherfucker. Fuck that. <laughs> I got a business, man. You know what I'm saying? Fuck the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I'll be talking to business. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got, you know what I'm saying? You know, I got, I talk to photographers and graphic designers. My photographer is white. Well, I don't think that just because you're a black whatever, like actress, actor, whatever, like, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you have to have a job. If you're an actor, you have a job, right? No. That you're means you're trying to get jobs. But you can't get mad because you don't get jobs. Because you're white? Well, I missed the... Yeah, that, that can't be a reason you don't get jobs because you're oh, black. Okay, no, that can't be a reason that you don't get jobs. I agree with that. What I'm sort of telling you is that when he was talking about the integration thing. Yeah. Yes, there are a lot of white people that hang with black people. I have a lot of white friends, a lot of black friends. I have a lot of friends with everything. But yeah, I do too. The few black friends I know that hang with no white people at all, I'll be honest with you, and I'm not going to say their names, but they don't have jobs. 
They're not trying to do any networking or anything because if they were networking or had a job or anything, then they would be interacting with some form of somebody other than what they are. You feel me? Yeah. Not too many 100% black companies in Huntington. There's not. I don't know that there's any. Really <laughs> there's not. And I guarantee you, if there is a black owned thing in Huntington, there's probably a white dude doing the taxes or some shit. Like, there's a white guy involved. <laughs> Yeah, being honest. <laughs> There's a Jewish guy. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Seriously. <laughs> Straight up. Just being real with you. You know what I'm saying? It's, sometimes it's about business. You know what I'm saying? People need to go make business shit. You feel me? I had a Jewish breakfast this morning hoping it would help me write comedy better. <laughs> it has not. What is Jewish breakfast? I had a bagel with a smear of cream cheese and some smoked salmon. <laughs> <laughs> Smoked salmon. <laughs> <laughs> Who has smoked salmon for his breakfast? That's one oh, step shit. behind lox, eggs, and onions. Like, that's about as Jewish as it gets. Man, all I know about Jewish people is kosher salt. Real shit. Kosher salt. Passover. They give us like kosher salt. That kills oh, me. No. Like, like, hardcore Jewish people. We'll have like two refrigerators, they'll have like two stoves, they'll have basically two kitchens in their kitchen to be full kosher to make sure that whatever doesn't touch the other thing that it's supposed to not touch, and you don't cook this with the thing and... Hey, they dedicated. Yeah. They're God's people supposedly, right? Uh, apparently. I'm just saying, like, I, we can go deeper into that and everything, but I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying, this is a comedy podcast. I got a I got a theory that my parents are like because like oh lord two thirds or something like that. Yeah, but you try to get through. I just I go bring it up and you go say oh lord right when I said no, 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 no. <laughs> as soon as he mentions his parents in any kind of opinion they have, <laughs> it's automatically oh god. This is this is my opinion that something like two thirds of the planet is Jewish, but the majority of them don't know they're Jewish because at some point in history. Their ancestors like, no, I'm not Jewish. What are you talking about? Like, things got a little too heated, and they went, no, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I'm descended from Jews that didn't want to admit that they were Jews. I just, I, <laughs> I hear you. I kind of have that feeling. You're in and out. You change because yeah. I, I can go on where, you know, say where I read a lot. Those people that think that the real Jewish people are black people and everything. I'm not saying that they're not. Just there's so much into that. You know what I'm saying? I know you've heard about it. Yeah. Well, they were Arabs, pretty sure. I'm just saying, like, I don't like giving to your the whole thing. Loves. Uh, yeah, except for Jesus. Dad loves Jesus. We bring up that Jesus was, well, he wasn't an Arab. He was Aramaic. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Saying there's all different stories with that, too. Somebody would take offense. Jesus wasn't an Arab. He was Aramaic. But it's it's marginal, the difference, culturally. All I know is that Jesus ain't no drugged up white man who like Charles Manson that I see on these pictures. No. It didn't you look like a young Zeus. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> these pictures looks like Charles Manson without the swastika in the nose for him. Yeah, he, he was You feel me straight up? You, you dig me though? Like a young Charles Manson without the swastika. He wasn't a yeah. skinny, long haired white guy. No. That much we know. No, that nigga wasn't was a member of the Bee Gees on that damn business. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You can the tell my boy I walk. I, I, I'm a ladies' I can't man. Stay alive. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. I, 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 stay alive. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Oh, that's what I'm just saying. That's what that Come is. Come back after three days. Come back after three days. I, 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 stay alive. Oh, shit. <laughs> See, y'all making fun of Jesus. Now somebody go and sit there and watch the video like, Illuminati rumors. You know what I'm saying? We're totally not making fun of Jesus. Man, I'm totally making fun of Jesus. Right now. <laughs> man, I, no, this is a dumb shit. Every I, eye is no. another fucking stinker. <laughs> That's some dumb shit right here, but nah, have I ever told y'all this Bryce shit? Bryce, four steaks? <laughs> Bro. Bro. Where's the fourth one? Kuzan, has anybody ever had an Illuminati talk with you? And I don't mean to talk about the Illuminati like, do you know they exist? Like, I've had people come to me as like, Shaq, would you sell yourself? For Illuminati? No, listen. What's the going rate for Did the Illuminati Shaq? actually come to me? No. What I'm sort of saying <laughs> is that, I was going to tell you what niggas who sat there and said that I was doing too much. You feel like I'm just showing you something out earlier. I was like, you probably sell your soul for the Illuminati. Like, are y'all, dude, I still live in Huntington. Why are we having an Illuminati conversation right now? I live in the hood. I live two houses up from you. Why are we having a Illuminati conversation down here? 
Who's There's pulling the strings in Huntington? I want to know. No, like, who in the Illuminati is getting a cut out of pulling the puppet I'm going to tell you that time. Whoever it is, they ain't never hollered at me. <laughs> they ain't never hollered at me. I would work to the mayor's office and I've never come across them. I don't know if they would holler, if they would have hollered at me by now, I wouldn't be working at Max and Irma's no damn well. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you know me, like, straight up. You right there, Eric? Yeah, <laughs> hiccups. <laughs> the hiccups are back. He's gone. <laughs> Well, anyway, um, this nigga like Bernie Sanders, he said to him, said he made a post earlier. There's a picture here from stage from last Wednesday, and he said he like a brown Bernie Sanders. That's what it looked like. <laughs> that was a purpose. Like, I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> you end up like that. Yeah, like, like, that's the shit. Like, you know, like, real. Speaking of that, um, are you a rough office next time? What? You were a rough office next time? Are you a Democrat or something? <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting conversation. <laughs> Here's what happened. I'm registered Republican. You're a Republican? But. <laughs> fucking hell. Look, the only reason I'm Republican is because somebody gave me $20 to register Republican. Y'all gotta laugh at this shit. I'm a resident Democrat, but anyway, I'm more of an independent. How about I got a, a friend? I don't know if you met my friend Malcolm or not. He black as hell. He's from mm -hmm. New York. You met Malcolm okay? Mm -hmm. from New York. He registered Republican, and we were making jokes one day. He said, man, I don't know if white privilege exists or not, but he said, I'll tell you this. He said, I registered Republican, and they gave me a, a, a little sticker to put on my car, and I've been pouring over since. <laughs> I used to work with Malcolm. Granted, I don't know if he does anything that he should be poured over for, but that's just funny to me. They even said that. You feel me? Mm -hmm. You want a real cigarette? I got this right now. Oh. <laughs> That's it, we'll kill your hiccups, nigga. <laughs> now I'm struggling. We can't cut, can't. we're going live, man. We're live. Oh, God. Dude, no, <laughs> <probably> <laughs> you know, the hiccups are right 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 fucking now. killing me. Probably I want to hear you giggling like you were an hour ago after each I can't up. because I got the fucking hiccups going. <laughs> yeah, I'm a motherfucker, something else. If I try. <laughs> Yo, AMF, what's going to take to get you back out there, though? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, see, this shit I do with you. Know <laughs> Y'all quiet for too long. Y'all shake for asking questions. That's what Shake does now. <laughs> anyway, I'm dying with Eric here. I hear you, but. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Like, I mean, I say I'm semi retired right now at the moment, but I'm not really sure what my motivation is there. Um, I mean, on uh, one hand, I feel like I'm kind of done with it because I just don't like it that much anymore. How about for fun? Well, like I say, I don't really like it. He doesn't like it at all. Why? It's He's just fucking weird. It's just not that fun anymore. Is it, is it because it was a business to you at one point in time? Or do y'all think it? Yeah, it's, it's it's so, it still hasn't been too much business. Like, even though it's became some of the business for me now, I still haven't really grown to hate it yet. Like, I really haven't made too much money never, off of this shit. I like, never grew to hate it. He hates it. No. You just said you hate it, so, I mean, you need to make it. I never said I hate it. You hate it. Well, I you didn't make your mind like up. It. I said I don't like it. Okay, so why not get back out there? Because I'm saying you was great, so you, we know you have the ability to do it. And if all those fails, like, I can use mentors and shit, too. I call him my mentor and every damn thing. And granted, you can <laughs> Please, take my place. It, I mean, man, I mean, Cruz Hines and her say he ain't that shit he want to, but he like that shit to a service. He I likes to fake somebody, but you like to fake somebody look up to you. Fuck that shit, man. Stop that. I like the fact that I'm acknowledged as, like, people say, the Cruz method. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, he likes that shit. He may not admit it. He likes that shit. I admit that I like the fact that people try my fucked up method of doing comedy that I don't think anybody should do. You're the new <laughs> Keith Terry. Including me. <laughs> so what's the problem? I can't do this with the fucking hiccups, man. It's killing me. So what's the problem? You don't want somebody to do... <laughs> with your method? Is that it? No, it's not. I don't recommend it for anybody. <laughs> well, you're recommending the fuck out of it. You say you don't recommend it. No, I didn't recommend it to you. Yes, the fuck you did, man. No. I, 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 I told you. I, I still try to write. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is hilarious. I still try to write. But I told you, this guy found my notebook and told me, like, yo, <laughs> you know you're funny, right? And, he, he, and then he pretty much got to a point where now every time I try to write some shit, I can't write as much because I keep hearing that motherfucker's voice. Like, you know you're funny, right? You know what I'm saying? Well, that's my fault. Like, it, don't let that stop you from writing stuff. No, I still write. But I, it, I don't write as extensively as I did. You know what I'm saying? I used to write my shit on an essay form. Like, yeah, you don't have to write the whole fucking paragraph. Like, you don't have to write the whole thing out as a model. I gotta call mercy on Eric with the hiccups. I'm sorry. This has been For Posterity, the podcast with Aaron Michael Fox. You <laughs> <laughs> say your name, you still have to step off the line, can't just me on my name. Fuck. I'm a Jefferson. <laughs> Eric Kusan and. This is Shank, man. What's up, people? Alright, we'll catch you next episode before Posterity. Alright, how? Fuck, we missed it by five seconds. Where are we at? 45 minutes.